So welcome back. I had a recommendation from a, one of the subscribers that they were curious on kind of what tools I thought were important and I thought it was a great idea. There's a lot of new people getting into it. So let's talk about some of the things that I consider pretty important in my shop for 3D printing and sustaining this wonderful hobby. I'm Ron and this is my place. So welcome to my shop. This is kind of the beginning views that we used to have. It's not super clean. I apologize for that, but I wanted to give everybody a little bit of a rundown. I'm going to go, kind of go quick because I don't want to make it too long. Uh, the first thing you're going to need is some sort of storage. As you can see up here, I have quite a bit of filament up there. I've got maker boxes. This is my active filament and I keep it all stored in desk containers so I can try and keep it as dry as possible. Um, and of course some of the stuff I don't have fit in there uh, but I've got specialty filament PETGs in that one and then these are all sorts of others usually I'll keep like crystals flex and then all your normal maker PLAs and then that's all the stuff I've yet to print with uh, so I've got quite a bit of filament so the important part here to pay attention to is you don't have to spend a lot of money you really need the basic tools you need a scraper especially if you have a non flexible bed Something that's got sharp corners, nice sharp edge, get up underneath the print, pop them free. Need side cutters, the better quality you can get, the better you'll do. Tweezers, really I think are a necessity, let you get up onto the hot end on the nozzle, get all the plastic filament away, and a flashlight. Got to have something to test that first layer, makes it easier to see, you can go at an angle and get a little contrast going on. Um, those are really, in my opinion, the go-to tools, and they always sit right next to my printers. They're never put away because I use them almost every print. This one I don't necessarily use anymore, not hardly at all, because I have two flexible um, plate systems. So one of the other things you're going to need is a, a place to kind of put things that you're going to get to quite often. Paper towels. This is all the stuff back here that is... Um, what I use for cleaning my bed and whatnot. You've got isopropyl alcohol, we've got hairspray, we've got acetone to clean PEI sheets, Elmer's glue, which is what I swear by, Magigoo, everybody swears by it. I haven't had that good of luck with it, but I've got to figure out exactly why, um, probably because it falls over. Uh, so that's all my bed prepped things, and I always kind of have a rag here ready to to wipe it down because I always wipe down before every print. Uh, then of course as you're getting into tinkering you want a decent little soldering iron, doesn't have to be super fancy, just something. Heat gun, heat gun mainly I use either for getting rid of the, the fine uh, hairs on the print or shrink to heat shrink on uh, some of my electronic projects. Uh, label maker if you're anal and like things organized, it's always a great thing to have. Camera lenses seem to be everywhere, but you probably don't need those. Uh, and the other thing I've got over here is a supply of nuts and bolts, of both standard and mainly metric. In this drawer I have a lot of my high use things. I printed out, 3D printed, um, some miscellaneous little containers, and I've got my Allen wrenches because I don't like butting around with all the other little ones that I have in here. Screwdrivers, wrenches for the right sizes. I've got a little... Um, squeegee that I use for laying down the, P, the uh, PI sheets and build tacks, etc. Files, I've got a little quarter inch socket um, that I use for uh, taking the hot ends, uh, the nozzles out, because you want to do them in and out when they're hot. Uh, these are all my miscellaneous little pliers. Uh, again, I probably have an extra set of side cutters right here. The, these are actually super important. Needle nose are always good for pulling supports off because I always have markers of different site types for doing different tests. The uh, brass brush is awesome. This is good for actually cleaning the, the nozzle when it's hot. It, it gets cleans up after those messes that you end up with. Um, spare scraper, always good. Make sure it's sharp. Scissors, obvious. Spare batteries, these batteries are actually for the, uh, the calipers that you'll see in a bit. And for me, I also have a 
FLIR system that goes into my iPhone. Use this for determining temps. Really, really useful. It's not necessary, but it really is an interesting thing because what it'll do, it actually lets you see the heat signatures of your beds and your nozzles. And I may be making a video actually of that separately. Um, I use that actually quite a bit whenever I question my uh, temperatures. Um, and then of course I have a little hammer for those hard to deal with parts and then crescent and a uh, adjustable wrench. In this drawer I've got a nice set of uh, blades, X-Acto knife, to, uh, to cut things up. I've got some sandpaper that goes with these which are really nice for sanding parts and dealing with things like that. And they have, they're color coded so they have different uh, different grits so you can know at a glance. Tape, SD cards, clips for if I have to glue stuff together. Um, then I've got my, my caliper. These calipers are pretty much a necessity. You got to have them. You need to have a set of these if you're going to do any kind of design work especially. Um, they're cheap. Get a set. If you got bad eyes, magnifying glass, one that's lit is all, all is the best. It really lets you see the layers or something really, really small, especially when you got old eyes like mine. Um, aha, the infamous socket, because I have it next to the 3D printed torque wrench. It's kind of cool. It goes onto there and it lets you go through and I can't do it with my bare hands, but it lets you actually torque it to the correct nook meter, which is awesome. Um, then I actually have another magnifying glass that goes into my little um, holders that I have up there and then I have the Biltex spatula. Um, I don't use it. I like the concept. It's just not sharp enough. I need to take it out to the grinder and actually sharpen this way down and then I think it'll be more useful. Um, but for now it's just been sitting in the drawer here gathering dust. And then the junk drawer this is where I keep all my zip ties, all my different bearings. Um, I've got some IGUS in here and some uh, standard other linear bearings. Uh, zip ties, I said, I've got more bearings here. Samples of Magigoo, miscellaneous sandpaper, some adhesive uh, tape, and then huge tool, Dremel. Little rotary tool of some sort. I have a kit that I have I've had for years and it's just it works really really good so it, it holds everything keeps everything organized these these blocks that normally get all filled up these little cutting wheels they work really good for plastic they last for what seems like forever um, the other side that's down here just has my miscellaneous uh, containers for when I'm building stuff so I can throw nuts and bolts and, and everything like that into it. Um, but that's really it. That's, that's the biggest tools, if you will, that I use. Like I said, the biggest ones are these right here, which are the, uh, put them where you can kind of see them a little bit, the, the flashlight, the tweezers, side cutters, and a spatula. That's really the, the fundamentals of what you, what you need. So hopefully this helped uh, again. Almost everything I print on, I print on a Biltac on the CR-10, and I have the flexible um, system for that, and I also have the flex system, of course, on my Mark III, which has a flexible PEI sheet. That's what I print with. The only time I use anything outside of that would be, like, I usually use either glue stick, or I've been trying to use Magigoo as a separation layer to keep things from sticking too well uh, on the PEI or the Biltac. Um, Usually that'd be your like pet G's or flexible filaments. Hopefully this showed you something and I hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you like what you're seeing here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Like it if you like it and if not, let me know what I can do different. Otherwise, have a great day and print everything you can.